we're ready to rock and roll. So, uh, this is the first episode of the Bump Coffee podcast. Um, we decided to do a podcast, I don't know, like maybe a couple months ago, and thought that it would just be a really good way to communicate with our customers, potential customers, future customers, the whole community of Encinitas, North County, San Diego, and then uh, really, the, I mean, obviously the whole idea is to just bring more people into our community and have a direct line of communication. So what we wanted to do for the first episode is give a history lesson of who we are, what we're doing, what we're trying to do, and uh, how we got here, the inspiration for the business, and all the things in between. So um, this is going to act as like a foundation, a reference point, context for, like I said, what we're doing, what we're going to do, and, and how we got here. So um, Ryan and I have known each other for a long time. and Yeah, we, uh, we grew up in Northern California, Bay Area. Uh, went to high school together, after high school, different colleges, but we still kept in contact. We're close friends as, you know, you know. So um, after, after college, we both kind of jumped into our careers. I was in construction management. Trev was in uh, sales up in San Francisco. Yep. And we were just not having it. I think uh, growing up, what we did learn about each other is we both had this similar feeling of kind of wanting to be a creator and kind of do our own thing. And uh, it just kind of came like right at the same time. We were both were like, hey man, like I'm kind of over doing this career thing. I knew we didn't want to do that our whole lives, but I think it was more of let's go do it to confirm that that's not what we want to do. So when it comes time to create something for ourselves that we're fully confident, we're not thinking if we made mistakes. Yeah, I think I don't know, it's kind of funny. There's been a couple times <clears throat> throughout our lives where, like, even in college, we were, like, not feeling college. I think we were both doing pretty bad in school, and we had, like, <laughs> uh, we're on the phone, and we're, and you were like, ah, fuck, I'm kind of <laughs> fucking up. And I was like, damn, me too. And then fast forward, you know, a couple years to, uh, you know, our careers and whatnot, and we were on the phone one time, and it, it we could each kind of got the vibe that either one of us wasn't really feeling what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was living in San Francisco, and I had uh, I had been going to this coffee shop on the on Divisadero in in, um, in Nopa, north of Panhandle in San Francisco. I was living up there, going to you know working and whatnot. But I would go to this coffee shop where they would make pour over coffees, just the way that we do them today. And the first time I went in there, I was like, "Holy shit, this is so cool!" Like I love the fact that I'm getting a cup of coffee made for me right here, right in front of me, and. So this thing, you know, was a, had a presence in my life for a year and a half while I lived up there. And then when it was time to, for, for me, it got to a point where I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something else. I gotta leave this job and I have to just like jump off the cliff. And so I, you know, I went to Nicaragua and Ryan went to Colombia and like, we just had crazy, awesome experiences. And yeah, we had, we, yeah, it was, it was the best time ever. Um, and at that point I wasn't even drinking coffee. Like I would consume every now and then before a surf in the morning or um, midday, just cause that, that's what people did. Uh, was just like, oh, let's go grab a cold coffee to get all jacked up before you go surf. But at that point, I didn't really understand kind of that world and like, you know, the culture behind it. That's really awesome. Um, but the way everything fell into place was that it, you know, worked out perfect. So I went to Columbia, um, at the time I had a, one of my best buddies, uh, was from Columbia. So he studied at Long Beach and he, school was over and he went back to Columbia and I was like, man, I'm coming to Columbia. This is going to be awesome. Trev went to Nica, uh, surfed his brains out. I didn't surf. Actually, I surfed a little bit in the Caribbean coast on, uh, the Northern part of Columbia, but really was probably the first time I had like the, the Latin American pour over where they like use a sock. I don't think it was actually my buddy's sock, but, <laughs> or, you know, but it was like a sock ish type of filter and they did it right there. I don't know if it tasted that great or not. I couldn't remember the taste, but the experience was something that I was like, Whoa, this is cool. It's so simple. It's so pure. Like, and then it just logged in. But by, at that point we didn't, we hadn't discussed business, but yeah. it, 
that was something that logged into me that I was like, wow, this is that's that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. And then well, I think we both kind of fell in love with Latin America, the culture, the just the ethos of Central Latin America, South America, the hard work that's involved with their culture. Um, so when I was in Nicaragua, I was, you know, I was by myself and kind of staying up in this little, like, I don't want to call it a hut, but it was like pretty rustic house up in the hills behind uh, Playa Colorado. And so I had like a lot of downtime by myself and I started recalling my experience going to the coffee shop. It was an Oasis Cafe on Divisadero and I started recalling that and I was like, man, like this lifestyle that I'm living here, surfing and drinking coffee in the morning and just like being healthy. It was like the healthiest I'd been in since I'd you know, left high school. We both played sports in high school. And so I was like falling back in love with being healthy and trying to eat good and surfing. And, and then this cup of coffee that I used to get in San Francisco just kept entering my brain. And so when I got back to the Bay Area, I did some research, figured out where this coffee shop was getting its coffee from. And I reached out to this guy named Roger who, uh, who lives in South, South San Francisco and was kind of the, the plug, I guess you would call it, for Oasis Cafe. And so I reached out to him and then I, got, I went up there, I bought a bunch of coffee out of one of this dude's coffee dungeon and he like told me everything about coffee that he knew and I was like, wow, we've tasted coffee and made coffee and all this stuff. So I brought back this contraption, the, the pour over system that we use and started making coffee for my parents for like a couple days and then Ryan came back from Columbia. We hadn't seen each other in, I don't know, four or five months. So he came over and I made him a cup of coffee. <laughs> I, he, I was like, you want a cream of sugar? And he was like, yeah. And then yeah, literally was, after he took the first sip, I was like, I think we should start a coffee business. And I said, fuck it. All right. Yeah. Actually, no. It took a little bit of yeah. convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I told myself, well, if I got over to the house and literally as soon as I walked in, the kitchen was right there on the left side. And then he goes, dude, try this cup of coffee. I just made it for you. And I'm like, all right. I was having a cream of sugar. Like, how could it not taste good? But it tasted significantly better than anything I ever had. And I was like, what? is that that's so bomb and i saw the simplicity and then that's when it connected and i was like dude i had like this same thing but like different just in columbia the whole time every morning like that that was my situation and then um took a little bit honestly probably was what a week a where week or so where you just kept we kept talking about it. We're like come on like we fuck we could do that we could travel again we can go all over the world yeah i was surf. just i was just so excited i was like dude this is what we need to do we can travel to go source coffee we can you know have our own business have free like have this freedom and i mean like what else like what else are we gonna do like and that's I, how i thought in I my head i was had, like what else are we gonna do we also had the idea like oh <laughs> All of our travels are going to be a tax write-off, as I if don't know, those so are free or something. Yeah. But you still have to pay for it. Maybe that was just a way to try to convince. But <laughs> it's like, oh, they're going to be tax um, write-offs, man. So it was like this kind of this perfect timing of like Ryan getting over his job, me getting over my job, traveling to similar areas that have similar cultures. You know, loving that lifestyle, loving being around the ocean, healthy and wanting to have the independence and the freedom and the control over what our lives look like. And so kind of, we were planning for the business, but I think we were really kind of, we were trying to design our own lives in a sense that we had total control. We were the architect of our own lives. Yeah. And that's what like, even to this day when things get hard, I'm like, fuck, I, there's no way I could ever have somebody design my life for me in a sense of like, they control how much I get paid. They control, you know, where my insurance, like, that, all that stuff's great. But to me, I want to have control over it. And uh, so we were planning the business, but we were also thinking about, like, how's our life going to look? What are we going to be able to do? We're going to be able to travel and surf and I do all like the things we, that we love to do. I feel like we kind of reverse engineered it at that point. Because yeah. it was like, all right, what life do we want? Now, how can we get to that through a coffee business? Yeah. And at that time, things have changed a little bit, but the overall mentality has been the same you know then it was like oh i just want to surf and travel and live on the beach and do this forever and it's like okay that's not necessarily realistic but like how could we kind of implement that 
like through our lives and how, how's that going to look later on? So then we started planning for the business that way. And I think that's what, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that has got us as far as we planned out what we wanted in our lives and real figured out a way, like, how are we going to get, what, what's going to allow us to do these things? Not going to be a pro surfer. Um, not a, didn't win the lottery. So it was like, how are we going to have this freedom? Well, let's figure out a way through business. And then it would, then it just kind of snowballed, started to snowball. Yeah. Um, and then, so when I came back from Nicaragua, kind of to take a step back, when I came back from Nicaragua, we have a good friend that we went to high school with that went to USD and he lived, you know, he had graduated and he was living in uh, PB with a group of buddies that all went to a uh, local high school up here in Encinitas, La Costa. And um, so like I stayed with them for a week and I had never been, I'd been to San Diego once or twice during college, but never really like stayed for an extended period of time and got to actually, you know, experience it for, for what it is. And so I was there for a week and I was, you know, cruising on a bike down to the PV pier and surfing and our other buddy court would come home from work and he was just so full throttle on surfing that he would surf with me after work. And I was like, dude, this is the life. So part of, you know, me talking to Ryan about like, let's start this business was like, and I think we should do it in San Diego. And then I think you were the one that was like, Oh, we should check out North County. Yeah. Cause I was in long beach. So I would come down quite a bit. I had some friends from long beach that were from San Diego, but then also to our, for our, a mutual friend that we had, um, or that we have, Scott, down in uh, Mission Beach at the time. So I would pass through here all the time, and and going through North County, I was like, man, I want to live in North County. This is so sick. It's like San Diego surf culture, but it's not, you know, at that time, I was kind of getting out of that whole college party phase. So, you know, it was like, it's not all in PB and not all mixed up. It's a little bit mellower. It's beautiful. Um, so then when Trevor was like, dude, let's, let's do it in San Diego. I was like, perfect, dude. We're going to go look at, let's go look at North County. Yeah. Or at least when we come down here, we're going to live in North County. Now we got to figure out how we're going to, where we're going to put our business. But the idea was we wanted to get our home base in North County, start building it then, and then figure out how the shops would come. Uh, yeah. So it was like, okay, we figured out we're going to live in Encinitas. We did a couple trips down, you know, looking for housing and whatnot. And couple four or five months or four months probably of like planning and and trying to figure it all out and like put everything together and then you know it was like got to a point where it was like we we just got to do it so we we got a one-bedroom apartment off ncs boulevard we shared that one-bedroom apartment for like three and a half years while we got our business up and running through the farmers markets here in san diego at that point in time uh farmers markets were like a very like they were popular so like the little italy one that we would do and the la jolla one would be busy like very busy so our goal was to get into those two farmers markets you know try out the ones during the weeks to see if they were worth our time and effort and all that stuff and we eventually got to a point where we were just doing uh, the little italy and the la jolla and maybe like one in the the (laughs) one in the (laughs) middle but one of the things that people always ask us like you know, the name of the business is Bump Coffee. So people are always asking us, what, how, how did you get the name? Because that's like the, the first part of starting a business is like naming it, right? And it's also, for whatever reason, seems to be like the most difficult part when you're starting out. It's like you don't want to choose something and then have to change it later, which is exactly what happened to us. We started out as Coastal Local Coffee, and the whole idea was that we were going to be local to the coast. But people in the farmer's markets, thank God, they would question the fuck out of it. They're like, are you growing the coffee locally? Are you growing it on the coast? And we're like, God damn. We had mint plants, and people would be like, are those coffee trees? And I would say, no, they're mint plants. Yeah, so we, uh, one of our friends, you know, finally, like, it was, at this point, we were like new friends, too. So it was pretty bold of her to be like, hey, you guys, you got to change the name. Yeah. But Mimi was like, dude, you got to change the name. Yeah. So... As soon as she said that, it like resonated, and we was like, "Oh man, we do." So we would just—I mean, we were reluctant as hell because we were just like, "Man, no, it sounds good." And for some reason, we we're like, "Well, then this little customer base that we've built for two months, three months, 
like what happened are they going to remember like are they going to know us like these are the things that are going through our head which were absolutely ridiculous because we were like making like a hundred dollars farmer's market at that time um but we're just sitting in the house and we're like all right if we're going to do it just like everything we've done if we're going to do it let's just fucking do it and we're going to go full throttle and not look back not question our decision we're just going to stick with it we looked at kind of the basic you can look online about how to name a business basic branding and it kind of we kind of learned that um something short something simple four letters if you can easy to remember um and then what you do around that is what really builds the brand like we w would always reference like oh what about nike when they first said nike people like what is that but they've built the brand over so long that now it, like now you understand so we're like okay we got to find something and then we'll build a brand around it um so we're looking around the house or our apartment or warehouse or whatever it was to us and we're just like uh naming things like oh cup coffee chair coffee this coffee blah, 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 all this stuff and then we get to a bar of sticky bumps wax and we're like sticky coffee and then we're like bumps coffee and then we said oh like bumps coffee that sounds kind of good like maybe we can create it around this like fictional character and like you know we can kind of build that and then we're like ah it's just kind of tacky and it's kind of limiting it kind of could have held us back like it just didn't feel right it was a bit corny yeah it was just like eh. so then we just dropped the s we're like what about bump bump coffee I'm like shit that sounds that sounds good it's like clean easy to remember and it's got a handful of meanings depending on who you're talking to and obviously the big one at least with our demographic was like oh bump like that's a reference to drugs and doing cocaine and like people might get you know friends were like oh well people might get you know they might think that you know it's too provocative or a little bit you know on the edge and for him and I, when people are saying that, it's like, shit, we're going to name it that then because, like, our whole thing has been kind of disrupting the normal culture and just, like, having fun and doing something different. And so that name just spoke to us right off the bat. It was like bump coffee. It's kind of like an action word, right? Like, yeah, it's like do a coffee. And that, that kind of fell in place with the brand of, like, what we wanted to build it around, which is – the lifestyle that we live, that we know tons of people live, that we feel that coffee hasn't like captured yet or that it hasn't embodied because it's had this culture for so long of, you know, kind of sleepy coffee shop, don't talk to anybody, work on your computer and, and like sip a scientific cappuccino where most people, at least in our community, are drinking coffee and going and doing cool shit. So we with the name of bump and it being kind of like an action thing to us and like how we saw it at that time, it was like, man, this is perfect. Bump coffee is it. Yeah. Then we weren't running. It really like solidified. It actually kind of the choosing the name bump coffee kind of solidified and like really made us think about how we were going to do things. Cause we're like, okay, we're going against the grain. This is actually perfect because the way that we are making coffee for people is, against the grain people always come in can i get a latte can i get espresso we have nothing against lattes or ca i like cappuccinos i'll get cappuccinos every time i go to another coffee shop but for us we wanted to do something different so when bump came up it was like man this like fits on us really well yeah it, like the fit was good yeah so it just it stuck with it with us and we ran with it and it really kind of empowered us to be like yeah we are fucking different like let's yeah. Let's really lean into being different. And so... Because there, there was a point of time where people, you know, when you're in the farmer's markets, you're like, I don't know, customers, there's customers that feel super entitled and like you need to prove to them that you're worth something. And like we would get ripped apart about a lot of stuff that we were doing. Why aren't, oh, you don't, do, what kind of coffee shop? Is this an experiment? Like you don't do espresso, you don't do this. Do you guys roast your own? At that time, we had somebody roasting for us. So we're like, like, no, nah, it's roasted, you know, that way. But, like, we're not the roasters. Like, so it, it, like, we were battling that confidence, I think, initially of, like, doing something different. 
and then having like a shitty name attached to it. But then we got this, this new name bump and it just like empowered like our concept. And we're like, Oh no, we're bump because then as soon as literally, as soon as we went to the farmer's market, I remember we put up our new sign and people were like, the first person was like, Oh bump, that's a cool name. And we we're like, yes. Yeah. Like, Finally, someone likes our shit. Yeah. So then it kind of gave us this freedom to act different and be different. And we felt like we could, we weren't being placed in a box anymore of like, we had to fall in line with traditional coffee shop culture. We could be ourselves. We were, the brand was different. The concept was different. And it just, to me, it was like, oh man, I can like stretch and I can, I can really kind of like let my hair down <laughs> in a sense well, of like, okay, we're just going to do something different and I'm okay with that. And really the name, when we chose the name and it was like, yeah, I feel good about this. So it, I think it kind of set the tone for what was to come in the next, you know, four or five years afterwards. And I mean, bump coffee is pretty hard to forget. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a memorable thing. The logo that we have, which, uh, you know, is like italicized bump, font and then has like a cup to the left of it but the cup and the b kind of line up perfectly so it just there's like e it's equal weighted and it, everything just kind of looks good together yeah and uh yeah so um for what we were trying to do in terms of like build community around the action sports that we love participating in like i grew up snowboarding i used to go to uh, Lake Tahoe all the time. My uncle lived up there. And um, so I was, you know, from like a young age going snowboarding, skiing, and then growing up in the Bay Area, you know, like skateboarding and BMXing and uh, all that kind of stuff was just like a part of our lives along with traditional sports. We both played football, baseball, uh, you know, and when we were younger, soccer and whatnot. So always been in athletics. And then obviously once you aren't playing organized sports anymore, then you kind of start to put your athletic abilities into other things. And so, you know, I had been snowboarding and skating when I was younger, but when I went to college, it became surfing and same with Ryan and Ryan started diving more and spending time in the ocean. And um, we kind of went on these like different, different paths, but they were like the same, we were like experiencing the same things that like, but not together. So when we kind of like circled back and started the business, it was like, oh, sh okay, we're like, I mean, we knew that we would like surf together and stuff, but it was like, we wouldn't learn to surf together. Yeah. So, um, but like always having some sort of community, like for when we were younger, it was football or baseball. It was like, we love being around like-minded people. So naturally when we got older, it became surfing and being around the ocean and, you know, well, just the camaraderie that you experience with people like in the parking lot or out in the water or whatever. It was like, that's something that we were drawn to. And yeah, so we really, no coffee shop or coffee business had really taken that approach. So it kind of, with the name and the way that we're making coffee and then our personal interests of surfing and snowboarding and stuff, it's just like, oh, we're just totally different and we're just gonna lean full on into yeah. our concept. And yeah, I mean, it's just been. A lot of, a lot of like people that I've asked this to, I, I asked, customers be like, Hey, like, like customers that will come in all the time and be like, man, like, this is so awesome. I just love being a part of this. I asked them, I was like, how, like before bump, how did you feel going to other coffee shops or things like that? And it's like, well, I would just go and get coffee. And that was it because there was the culture was just like the making of the drink where I think what kind of empowered us and what got us like really rolling is it was a, um, it kind of like embodied our personal lives and who we were like the business was a representation of us and just active people that like to do fun things. And there's a lot of those types of people. So then it started to embody everybody else in the community, which then built the community. So then people can be like, I associate with that, not just because I drink coffee, but because what they're doing and what they're promoting and like the lifestyle that bump coffee lives, I do that same thing. So I'm like deeply connected with that, which helped grow the community, which then when it came time to leave in the markets to get in a coffee truck that we parked in Encinitas, 
um, well, as we were trying to find a shop, we had community kind of coming and realizing, that seeing the brand and being like, man, I like, I connect with this brand more than just you make coffee and I drink it. It's like, we go surf together. I see this person in the water. I see this person on the trail. Like, this is the lifestyle I want to live and I want to be a part of that. And yeah. I think that was probably the best thing about being so different in the sense of the normal coffee culture. And because we're always like, how is, how is there not a brand or a coffee like company that is like kind of like a Red Bull plus like a Starbucks kind of thing. Like if you look at all these athletes or just people in general who are, let's say sponsored, you know, powered by Red Bull or whatever, um, high chance they're drinking coffee first thing in the morning, but how is there not a coffee company that has taken that role of like, no, we're the catalyst to get you going and doing all those things where it's like, oh, Red Bull gives you wings. You know, I'm just saying Red Bull because it's a big energy drink, but how has there not been a coffee brand that does that? Because it's healthy, it's clean, and everybody does it in the world. Everybody drinks coffee in the world for the most part. So that was motivation for us to like, dude, let's be that brand. And I think just kind of well, yeah, I think collectively that, it brought. Yeah, I think that both of us <laughs> like have a, a desire to connect with people on a, on a deeper level. And so, you know, we didn't want to just be a coffee shop that just served coffee and that was it. We wanted to have conversations with people and like you know you can have we once you figure out that somebody has you know they're like-minded the conversations go so much deeper and you actually build real relationships and we try to eliminate the transactional type of feeling when you come to our coffee shop it's more of like hey this is like my hangout this is where i kind of yeah you're getting a cup of coffee but man i hope i hope you get fired up on the conversation that you have and not just the cup of coffee like we want to talk about everything, man, like just everything. So for us to actually put out there what we're about other than coffee, like, yeah, we love coffee and we travel and go to the farms and all that stuff. And we're going to get into that in, in later episodes. But, you know, we really wanted to put out who we were, what we're into, and we're all going to drink coffee. So let's drink coffee with people that we enjoy being around and we have, you know, we're like minded. Right. So. Yeah, and then like it's freaking it's blossomed into like some crazy parties and well, just bi like all these people yeah. showing up to some of the parties that we've thrown and it's like Dude, holy it's shit crazy. like the uh, the community is like because growing up we had similar families of like always hosting people so like it's natural for us when people come in we wanted people to feel like they're coming to our house for breakfast you yeah. know what I mean so it's like yo come in like what's up I'm gonna talk some shit to you because we're buddies and you've been in here five or ten times I know your name I know this da 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 let's grow this thing and through that like the parties that we've thrown for like one year anniversary or just I mean really it was like I can't shred but I think the probably the first party we ever did actually let me take that back the first like party we ever had we were working on the Cardiff shop and it was like 4 p.m. and we're like, fuck, let's just get some beers and drink some beers at the shop and just enjoy the fact that, wow, we got a place right now. Next thing you know, we start calling friends, friends, friends. There's 25 people with handles of alcohol and, and 30 packs and we're tearing all it up. All people that we had met through like running the coffee truck and, you know, some of the farmer's markets and stuff. But And then that just snowballed and then we threw, you know, then we started, then it was like actual committed parties like, hey, we're doing an anniversary party at house that we lived at we took down one of the side fences our buddy andy wood brought in his tr uh, little uh horse trailer turned into a bar we had like hundreds of people there um we were making i was making oysters in the back cocktails. you and will were barbecuing Bar we had Dude, andy it was and his so buddy gnarly but it's so much cocktails. fun and but that's like we look i was i remember literally looking around at the party and be like damn like when we first moved down here we didn't know anybody mm-hmm and now we're throwing a party at a house that we lived at with 200, 250 people that I know every single person in here. And yep. they, I see them every week. It was yeah. a pretty cool feeling. And then, you know, even to now we look at the Lucadia shop, we, did, we had a grand opening party. And, like, dude. That was, was the biggest party I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> there was, like, 300, 400 people, top, bottom, everywhere, shoulder to shoulder. And it was again like 
90% customers that we knew that were stoked. Not only we had booze and Salento was hooking us up with like a little tequila bar and um, we had tacos and all kinds of good stuff like that. But it was just the, I think the, the authenticity that we provided through the years of just like doing what's natural to us and like building the brand, it allow it like connects with not everybody. We, we say that all the time. We're not for everybody. We're just for those who are like-minded in a sense. And that has staying true to that throughout the whole business, whether it's what we're offering or the way we, you know, act on Instagram or the way that we do this or that keeping it core and keep staying true to who we are. And that's what built the community. And now, now we have an army behind us and it's amazing. It's yeah. Absolutely so I, I think amazing. that like we spent, you know, all this time building a physical community that we interact with every day and a huge part of doing the podcast and being able to directly communicate with everybody is we really want to take it online and really spread our wings and expand the community. So, you know, the podcast, we're going to start doing some other stuff content wise that hopefully will incorporate more people on the team, show our personalities. And so the next year or so it's going to be heavily, heavily online stuff. And, you know, we've got a new website coming up in the next couple months. Um, Everything's going to be way more dialed in online for us in the next year. And new products. A lot of new products, new new coffee blends, new instant coffee. Um, a lot of new things coming up in the next year. Um, looking beyond that, though, two to five, you know, three to five years out, I think uh, you know, we alluded to, you know, we love surfing, we love snowboarding, mountain biking, BMX, like anything action sports related. Uh, we're into that hiking, camping, four wheeling, you know, doing trips in Baja, surfing, fishing, all that kind of stuff. So anywhere there's that kind of activity going on is a, is open for discussion in terms of expanding our retail yeah. part of the business. So Absolutely. we have a shop in Cardiff, we have a shop in Lucadia. And, um, I mean, I, I like stay awake at night thinking about doing a shop in Mammoth or, you know, in Tahoe or Truckee or something like that. And then even beyond that, we spent time in Colorado, you know, last year and frick, like we would just randomly, one of us would be like, dude, it'd be sick to have a coffee shop out here, like yeah. over in Breck or I don't know, something like that would be kind sick. Of the trajectory is like tasteful places that we feel connected to. And, and that we want to spend time in and we yeah, like the exactly. community and it's like-minded people and we're all on the same page already. So like, well, let us serve you coffee and empanadas. You know, that's the idea of like, does a community fit our vibe? Do we fit the community's vibe? Is it a good match? Um, and, and if it is on like a, on a personal level, like we fit in and when they like us, then like, let's do business together in the sense of let's serve you guys coffee and let's serve empanadas and really have a good time while we're doing that. Yep. And um, so mountains, more beach, Hawaii, fucking maybe Mexico one day. Who knows? Um, so that kind of wraps up the, the short little history lesson that we wanted to kind of, you know, we wanted to lay the foundation for for future episodes and, and have this episode up there as a reference point if uh, if anybody ever wants to dig deep and really kind of get to the origin story of, of Ryan and I and the business and whatnot, you can always come back to this episode. And we'll be able to and, uh, expand more on like specific things yeah, as we kind of continue to put out this content and if we get a lot of feedback talking about you know, what about this or what about that? Like, we're going to, we're going to go through everything. That's, that's what this is all about is just connecting more in another way of education and fun and yeah. just continuously having a good time. And so, uh, last week I had posted on Instagram that we were going to start podcasting and to submit some questions. And so we went through and I chose a couple of questions that I thought, uh, would give us the opportunity to elaborate on some of our experience and, which, you know, created the inspiration and the motivation to, you know, build the business and um, some of the elements that go into the business in terms of operation and simplicity and streamlining things. And all of these ideas that we have for the business, they come from past experience. And, you know, one of the big experiences that we have is 
those initial trips to Latin America. And then since then, we've spent a lot of time in Mexico and Colombia and Peru. And um, so every time we've left home and gone to another country, another culture, we've brought in something back that is being implemented into the business, whether it's exactly like what we saw or it's a version, a remix of something that we saw in another country or another culture. Yeah. So um, first question, what's the best advice you have or have heard for traveling to foreign countries? Um, I think the number one thing, well, actually, yeah. And this doesn't have to be for foreign countries, but this is, I think, more in a foreign country, especially if the language is, if there's a language barrier, but awareness, like, that's the biggest thing, especially for Baja and, like, Mexico or just anywhere that feels far from home in your own safe place is, like, you just got to be aware. That's for damn sure. Because as free and amazing as south of the border, like, especially Baja, because you're out there, it's remote, it's also rides the line of things can turn bad <laughs> really fast, whether it's a vehicle situation or an injury or things like that. So just being aware and understanding how to like, you know, have the confidence and how to take care of certain situations. And honestly, even like talking about it before, um, before you go on a trip, like every time we've been, would go down to Baja on like a roadie, we talk about these things. If something happens like this, what are we gonna do? If yeah. this happens, what are we gonna do? If keep like all this stuff. And then when we're down there, if some, if one of these things ever happen, it's like, okay, we played this ready. Now we have an opportunity. And that's just kind of the safety part of uh, yeah, I travel. Think, I think, uh, you know, sometimes you read stories and you hear mm -hmm. about people in Baja, you know, getting their truck stolen or they're getting robbed at gunpoint or whatever. And it's like, we've had conversations of like, okay, more, more having the conversations of like, yeah, what, what would we do? But it's more of like, are we, do we have the same mindset if something like this would happen? So if something does happen and I react or Ryan reacts in a certain way, it's like, you have to, you have to fall in line in a sense. And like, you know, someone made the call and you got to just go with it and like make sure that whatever that call was is going to be executed. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's nice to have somebody to travel with. Um, but at the same time, I think that, you know, you obviously don't want to put yourself in dangerous situations. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but I don't think either one of us have ever had an extremely dangerous situation. But who knows if we never have thought about situations maybe something could maybe have happened. Yeah, maybe one of them could have um, You know, I've heard stories of people in, you know, in Mexico or Costa Rica getting in some, things can be weird, things can get kind of lost in translation. So you might think you're doing something totally normal and some other person that doesn't like Americans or doesn't like tourists or whatever sees whatever you're doing and they take it the wrong way and like, dude, yeah. life is cheap down there. So you just never know what can happen. So being aware, head on a swivel, which and then rolls into the whole respect thing yeah. of like just being because ninety nine percent of the time everybody, at least that I've like every country I've ever been to, all my travels, everyone is so amazing, and you know you're pretty much a mirror. That's the way I look at it. Is if I'm giving somebody mad respect or their, or vice versa, it just goes back and forth, and that's how the people are in other countries as well as here, but mostly for traveling. So just respect can get you so far. But if you think that because you have a better vehicle or these people are driving this thing or this, and if you think for one second that you're better than anybody in these other countries because you have more money or because of this and they sense that, that just, that just brings this whole, you just open the door to something else and might as well keep that door closed. Yeah. On the flip side of that, you don't want to be you know, walking around like a scaredy cat because that's just like no, yeah, smell just, blood in the water. Yeah. So I'm specifically saying like, don't be, yeah, don't no, be no, an no. idiot. I just want to throw simple. that out there that you don't also don't want to be like, yeah, don't be scared of <laughs> tiptoeing around. People will be like, what the hell is wrong with this dude? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the next question was, what are your favorite food spots while traveling? Uh, I think favorite food spots, I'm not exactly sure what this question was referring to, like specific restaurants or just in general. Like, I don't know, for me, I like 
if I can get a bead on a spot through somebody who's you know lives in an area, lives in Ensenada, lives in Tijuana, lives in Lima, if somebody that lives there and is living you know every day, and they can tell me about a spot that's like yeah. a local spot, that's where I want to go. Uh, I mean, Lima doesn't have a lot of. We spent time in Lima together with our buddy Edgar and our other friend David, and. Lima doesn't have like a lot of like American tourism, at least not that I saw. So I felt like every spot was kind of a local yeah, spot. Yeah, no, straight up. And we yeah. went, there was actually one spot that we went to, La Lucha. And it's like a Peruvian sandwich spot, juice bar, you know, beers, but it's like popping late at night and just a cool ass vibe. And the way we went to the one in Miraflores in, uh, in Lima and we actually went to a couple of them, but like places like that where you get to fully immerse yourself into a culture and like you just get to observe and just kind of like go with the flow and like i don't even i'm just getting whatever everybody else is getting i don't even i'm not gonna that's the best thing is when you go and you see you know you see some what seems like more funded restaurant and it's like oh that must be really great because it's all awesome looking and then you see all the locals at this little hole in the wall it's like that's where i'm going right there like this looks great that looks sketchy but i'm going to the sketchy zone because that's where you're gonna probably taste the best food you've ever had yeah um specifically for me uh, like i don't know i just mexican food i mean peru was absolutely out of control colombia too but i think it's because the consistency that i've had is just like down in baja whether it's in valle or actually when we we're in uh in laredo don't tell people that spot. That spot. <laughs> no, actually, you, you should. Know I mean? You should go what there. What is it called? Orlando's? Orlando's. Orlando's, man. They had, oh, shit. It's just it like. It was so good. Killer Mexican plates. Good. Unreal margaritas. But yeah. it's like, they just get it. They understand what we're trying to do. They understand that, you know, it's time to party. So they just totally cater to that. And But I like those places that, like, the, you know, the, the people that are serving you or the bartender, they understand what they can get a gauge on what your vibe is and then they can kind of reflect like okay the, i can get a sense that these guys are trying to you know party a little bit and drink a little bit like let's let's get them yeah let's get the engine started and like let's see how far we can push it i like when that happens because on the flip side i get super bummed out if i get bad service and it's people seem annoyed that i'm there well that's another thing about the the restaurant culture in Latin America is that's a like which it should be that's a prideful job and position so these people take pride in what they're doing and like specifically that night at Orlando's the you know the server was like so stoked to tell us like I'm like hey give me what you would eat and he's just like oh man I love this 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 it's like bring it out same with the with the uh, bartender he he was like so excited to make us a drink. He's like, let me make you something special that I like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The pride and like, that just kind of brings together the whole thing with. Yeah, so I think like ambiance, whether it's like a curated ambiance or it's just the natural ambiance of like a little taco shop in yep. Tijuana and like it's busy and they don't have time to talk to you because it's so busy. I like that, but yeah. then I also like the curated, you know, finer dining places like um, like you know fauna or fink altisano or floor farm farm, farm, farm stuff like that i mean you you got to understand though that when you're going to that it's like this is a bigger operation there's money there's like it's curated and like that's awesome and you're gonna get treated super well but you know those little taco shops or nothing better than that whatever is um this next question that we picked um, what's on your short list of places to visit? Uh, for me, I want to go uh, San Miguel de Ande, which is in Mexico. It's supposed to be insanely beautiful. My wife has been there a couple times, and she said it's just like France, but Mexico. Where, me- where is that in Mexico? Uh, I believe it's a little bit south of Mexico City. So it's I could not, be wrong. Is it on the coast or is it not no, on the coast? No, no, no. It's up in the mountains. I think it's Sick. a little bit south. Um, and then Guadalajara, I want to go there super bad. I want to go to Mexico City super bad. I mean, for me, I just love Mexican culture. I love the, f- the food. It's just so fucking good to me. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I would love to go back to Nicaragua. I'd love to go with you. 
go kind of retrace yeah. some steps. And I think obviously we'd want to go to Columbia. Um, I'd like to do a redo, not a redo, but like another take in Peru. Now that I understand Peru, I didn't understand it as much, but I did appreciate it. Yeah. Um, for sure. Mexico, Mexico city, uh, mainland. I well, like, we've been the Oaxaca a little bit for coffee, but I want to go to Mexico city, Guadalajara. Um, and then of course, one of my top lists is Argentina to go eat some empanadas oh, and yeah. go stay with Matias and his family and get that whole experience and kind of see, like, we know where the coffee's coming from. We know like the, the stuff that we're really about. And then it's like, it would be great to go over there and they have really good steaks I would, and beef. I've heard that and wine. Punta del Este in Uruguay is supposed to be like all the, not all the, but a lot of Argentinians will go there like in the summers or whatever. And it's like, see, people have these you know, pieces of land that just go right onto the beach and they're cooking on their, their grills and wine. And like, there's nothing better than Central and South America. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's That's like, about as good as it gets. Uh, and then I, I, I think going to the Lanai would be sick and going, yeah. um, go hunting, like bow hunting out there would be really dope. Uh, pretty much want to go everywhere. <laughs> pretty much all the cool places. But, uh, like. yeah. So cool. that wraps up the first episode of the bump coffee podcast, which will be on YouTube and Spotify. So please subscribe, turn on the notifications, leave a comment and like the episode if you like it if not it's all good um yeah this will go live on friday so today's thursday we'll go live tomorrow on the 20th yep. and um yeah we appreciate any feedback if you want to hear more about how we started the business or us personally or whatever stuff you'd want to hear in the future yep send Just, us messages send, yeah. leave comments wherever we'll try to and then with the comments we're actually gonna uh we're gonna pick our favorite comment and we're going to send you something. It'll be, well, actually, I guess I'll just decide on that time. But I think it might be a bag of coffee, maybe some instant coffee, too, and maybe even a hat. So go ahead and um, comment on our YouTube. And you're going to get yourself a little package. And if you live locally, you can come by the shop. We'll coordinate picking it up. If you don't, no problem. We'll just ship it to you the same day. Yep. So. All right, yep. cool. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one.